We now move on to consider Jesus' second trial in front of Pontius Pilate. We've seen already that as far as the Jews are concerned, Jesus is deserving of death. He is guilty of blasphemy. But the Jewish ruling council, the Sanhedrin, has a problem. They're unable to carry out the death sentence. What they need, therefore, is to convince the Roman authorities that this man, Jesus, is a threat to them and that he must be silenced. So we see something very interesting happen between the end of the Jewish trial and between the beginning of the Roman trial. The charge being brought against Jesus is changed. Jesus has been found guilty of blasphemy. But the Jews know that if they present this prisoner to Pontius Pilate and say, he needs to be condemned to death for he is a blasphemer, Pontius Pilate will say away with you Jews. You can sort out your own petty trivial matters among yourselves. This has no bearing on Rome. What they need to do, therefore, is convince Pontius Pilate that this man is guilty of a different crime. He is guilty of the crime of treason. Treason is any action that directly undermines the authority of the state. If they can convince Pontius Pilate that this man is a threat to Rome, a threat to the authority of Rome, that he is some kind of rebel against Roman rule, then perhaps Pontius Pilate will put him to death. And we know that this was exactly the charge that was brought against Jesus. The charge is changed from one of blasphemy to one of treason. For Pilate asks Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? If Jesus is a self-proclaimed king who is attracting a large number of Jewish followers and who is directly opposing Roman rule, this is a big deal in Pontius Pilate's eyes. Such people must be silenced. And the Romans were very, very effective at silencing those kinds of wannabe kings. Jesus responds to Pilate, you have said so. And then various accusations are brought against Jesus. But Jesus remains silent throughout. Pilate's amazed. This prisoner puts up no defence. Doesn't he realise his life is on the line? And yet Jesus just closes his mouth and is silent before his accusers. Pilate can see no good reason to condemn this man to death. But he has an out. Because it's tradition every year during the time of the Passover festival for the Roman state authorities to release a Jewish prisoner as an act of goodwill, if you like. And there's a Jewish prisoner in the cells at this particular moment, a man named Barabbas, a man who is guilty of treason, a man who is an insurrectionist, a one who has led an uprising against Rome, a man who is a murderer, who very likely has killed Roman soldiers. And Pilate gives the Jews a choice. Would you like to release, would you like me to release Barabbas, this murderer, this despicable fellow, or would you like me to release this man, Jesus? Pilate is probably counting on the Jews to say, oh, release Jesus. But they don't say that because the chief priests have already stirred up the crowd and convinced them to shout for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to go to his death. The crowd persuades Pilate to sentence Jesus to death. It's Pontius Pilate who signs the death warrant. But Mark wishes to show that throughout, it's the Jews that are pushing, pushing for Jesus to be crucified. Now, through the trials of Jesus, the Jewish trial before the Sanhedrin, and through the account of the Roman trial before Pontius Pilate, Mark is showing how there's injustice upon injustice. The Jewish trial happens at night in secret. The Jews have already decided in advance what the outcome of the trial is going to be. Various false witnesses are brought to testify. Their testimonies don't agree. Jesus is condemned as worthy of death when it's far from clear that he's committed a grave crime. The charge against Jesus is changed from blasphemy 
to treason. Jesus stands before Pontius Pilate as one who is innocent of all charges, and yet the Roman authorities stir up the crowd to insist that Jesus is crucified. And so with that, Jesus is condemned to death. He is flogged, and then he goes to his crucifixion, and to that we will turn in due course.